It was six o'clock on a winter's evening. Thin, dingy rain spat and drizzled past the lighted street lamps. The pavement shone long and yellow. In squeaky galoshes with Macintosh collars up, and bowlers and trilbies weeping, youngish men from the offices bundled home against the thistly wind. Going my way, Charlie? Oh, there's a pig of a night. Night, Mr. Swan. An older man, clinging on to the big black circular birds of their umbrellas, were wafted back up the gaslit hills to safe, hot, slippered, weatherproof hearts. And wives call mother. An old, fond, flea bag dog and the wild spat. Youngish women from the offices who smelt of scent and powder and wet pixie hoods and hair scuttled giggling arm in arm after the hissing trams and screeched as they splashed their stockings in the puddles rainbowed with oil between the slippery lines. In a shop window, two girls undressed the dummies. Where are you going tonight? Depends on Arthur. Up she comes, my time next at now. Blinds came down over another window. A newsboy stood in a doorway, calling the news to nobody, very softly. Earthquake! Earthquake in Japan! Water from a chute tripped down his sacking. He waited in his own pool of rain. A flat, long girl drifted, snivelling into a hanky out of a jeweler shop, and slowly pulled the steel shutters down with a hooked pole. She looked in the grey rain as though she were crying from top to toe. Silent man and woman dressed in black carried the wreaths away from the front of their flower shop and it descended deadly darkness behind the window light. And the lights went out. Man with a balloon tied to his cap pushed a shrouded barrel up a dead end. A baby with an ancient face sat in its pram outside the wine vaults. Quiet, very wet, peering cautiously all around him. It was the saddest evening Young man with his arm around his girl passed by me laughing, and she laughed back right into his handsome, nasty face. I made the evening sadder still. I met Leslie at the corner of Crimea Street. We were both about the same age, too young, too old. Leslie carried a rolled umbrella, which he never used, though sometimes he pressed doorbells with it. He was trying to grow a mustache. I wore a Trek ratting cap at a Saturday angle. We greeted each other formally. Good evening, old man. Evening, Leslie, right on the dot. Boy, that's right, I said, right on the dot. A plump, blonde girl smelling of wet rabbits minced past on high-heeled shoes. He was clicked, soul squelched. Leslie whistled after her, low, admiring. Business first, I said. Oh, boy, Leslie said. And she's too fat as well. I like him corpulent. Remember Penelope Bogan? Mrs. too. Oh, come on, that old bird of paradise alley. How's exchequer, Les? One and a penny, how are you fixed? Tanner, what'll it be then? Compasses? Free cheese at the Marlborough. We walked towards the Marlborough. Dodging umbrella smoke, spoke, smacked by a windy mat, stained by steaming lamplight, seeing the sodden, blown scourings of the ta and street wash of the town. Papers, drags, regs, rind, fag ends, balls of fur, flat float and cringe along the gutters. Hearing the sneeze and rattle of the bony trams and a ship hoot like a fog ditched owl in the bay. Now Leslie said, what we do after? We'll follow someone, I said. Remember following that old girl up Kitchener Street? When we dropped her hand back? Should have given it back, I said. Oh, there wasn't anything in there. Only a piece of bread and jam. Here we are, I said. The Marlborough Saloon was cold and empty. There were notices on the damp walls. No singing, no dancing, no gambling, no peddlers. You sing, I said to Leslie, I'll dance, then we'll have a game of nap, and I'll peddle my braces. The barmaid, gold hair, two gold teeth in front, like a well-off rabbit, was blowing on her nails and polishing them on a black marrow king. She looked up as we came in, then blew on her nails again, polished them without hope. You can tell it isn't Saturday night, I said. Evening, miss, two pints and a poem from the till. Leslie said, Give us your one and a penny, Les, I whispered, and then said aloud, Anyone can tell it isn't Saturday night. Nobody's sick. Nobody to be sick, Leslie said. The peeling liver-colored room, I'd never been drunk in at all. 
Here, commercials told jokes and had scratches and sodas with happy dyed port and lemon women. Dejected regulars drew grand and muzzy in the corners, inventing their pasts, being rich, important, and loved. Reprobate grannies in dustbin black cackled and nipped. Influential nobodies revised the earth. A party with earrings called Frilly Willy played the crippled piano, which sounded like a hurdy-gurdy playing underwater until the publican's nosy wife said no. Strangers came and went, but mostly went. Men from the valleys dropped in for nine and ten. Sometimes there were fights, and always there was something doing. Some argy-bargy, giggle and bluster, horror of folly, affection, explosion, nonsense, peace. Some wild goose flying in the boozy air of that comfortless humdrum nowhere in the dizzy ditch water town at the end of the railway lines. But that evening was the saddest room I had ever known. Leslie said in a low voice, Think she let us have one on tick? Wait a bit, boy, I murmured. Wait for her to thaw. But the barmaid heard me and looked up. She looked clean through me, back through my small history to the bed I was born in, then shook her gold head. I don't know what it is, but I feel kind of depressed tonight. Leslie said as we walked up Crimea Street in the rain. Saddest night in the world, I said. We stopped, soaked and alone, to look at the stills outside the cinema we called the Itch Pit. Week after week, for years and years, we had sat in the edges of the springless seats there in the dank but snug flickering dark, first with toffees and monkey nuts that crackled for the dumb guns, and then with cigarettes, a cheap, special kind that would make a fire swallower pop up the cinders of his heart. Let's go in and see Lon Chaney, I said. And Richard Talmadge. And Milton Sills. And, and Noah Beery, I said. And, and Richard Dix. And Slim Somerville. And Hoot Gibson. We both sighed. Oh, for our vanished youth, I said. We walked on heavily with willful feet splashing the passers by. Why don't you open your brolly? I said. It won't open. You try. We both tried. And the